In today's world, the vegetation is almost completely dominated by flowering plants. But in earlier geological eras, there were forests dominated by groups of plants which play only minor ecological roles today. And one of the most important and widespread of these is the horsetails, of which there are maybe two dozen species worldwide, mainly living in wet places, and we have about a dozen species or hybrids here in Ireland. And one of the most distinctive and eye-catching is the water horsetail. In the years before the Great Famine, Water horsetail grew in such profusion in boggy ground on the hills in Kerry that it was cut and made into ricks as winter fodder for cattle. Like all horsetails, it has these distinctively ridged hollow green stems, here with few branches, but in many other species, as we will see, there are whorls of branches at intervals. The leaves are reduced to these little pointy crowns, but the work of photosynthesis is mainly done by the green stems linking the crowns. These structures at the top are the spore cones or strobuli. And if you look with a hand lens or microscope, you can see it has whorls of shield-like structures on the underside of which are five to ten spore cases or sporangia which open by a slit on the underside to shed the spores downwards. Here the spore vessels are shedding their spores. And here, at higher magnification, are the spores themselves. Each of the spores has four whip-like tails the wriggling, coiling and uncoiling of which, in response to changes in humidity, helps to split the spore case, releasing the spores which are dispersed by the wind. When they germinate, these spores produce not, as you might expect, a new horsetail plant, but a tiny plantlet called a protalus, of entirely different form to the familiar horsetail, on which either sperm cells or egg cells are produced. These protalli are usually either male or hermaphrodite, with male and female on the same protalus. But in hermaphrodite protalli, the female organs generally mature first to prevent self-fertilization. The sperms are spirally coiled and multiflagellate, which enables them to swim and make their way to little flasks on the female protalus in which egg cells are produced and protected and where fertilization takes place. And it is from the embryo thus produced by sexual reproduction that the new horsetail plant will develop. Now, in some horsetails, uh, the spore cones are produced at the tips of green vegetative shoots, such as in the water horsetail we've just seen. But in some other species, there are distinct, separate, vegetative stems and fertile stems. And one of these is the giant horsetail, which produces its spore cones much earlier in the year before the vegetative stems and when there's little in the way of encroaching vegetation to interfere with spore dispersal. So this is all that's left of the fertile stems at this time of the year. Uh, they've now shed their spores and they're beginning to die off. And here are the newly emerged green vegetative stems. They're quite small now, but come back in a month or two and these will be well over a metre tall. Seen here along one of the tributaries of the Cam Cor in Sleeve Bloom in early May. Giant horsetail is one of the diagnostic plant species of spring lines and places where tufa is developing. Another species that has separate vegetative and spore-producing stems is the common field horsetail, 
a species that grows in drier situations than most horsetails and can at times be a troublesome weed. Its fertile stems appear in March, again before the vegetative stems, which superficially resemble miniature conifers, take over. Our giant horsetail is among the larger species surviving today. But at an earlier time in Earth history, for about 100 million years between the Devonian period and the Permian period in Earth history, the horsetails and their relatives were the dominant plants in the understory of the world's forests. Some of them growing as tall as 30 metres high. If you can imagine a Lilliputian forest of modern horsetails blown up to the size of a modern rainforest, you can just about imagine what these great swamp forests looked like. During the Upper Carboniferous period of Earth history 300 million years ago, the partially decayed remains of these forests accumulated to form seams of coal, each of which could be up to 30 metres in thickness, stretching over an area of as much as 1,500 kilometres. It would have taken a layer of dead vegetation three metres deep to form a coal seam one-tenth of that in thickness. It was these great coal seams that fueled the Industrial Revolution between about 1760 and 1840. And in them we sometimes find the fossil remains of those giant horsetail trees. You can see the characteristic striations and the whorls of leaf scars at intervals. And if we dissect the stems we would find the same essential structure in the interior. And since the stems were hollow, when the trees fell they were very easily crushed like this. Although great reptiles no longer graze the flinty stems of horsetail, many smaller creatures find food and shelter in the undergrowth of these miniature forests, and a number of insect species feed on it exclusively, among them the horsetail weevil Gripus sequicetae, whose ancestors are thought to have been associated with the plants that dominated the ancient forests of the Carboniferous. This is a typical stand of the common field horsetail. Now at one time uh, certain species of horsetails were used for scouring pots and pans because the tissues are impregnated with silica which is the same material that you find in glass and for that reason also they were thought to have the ability to remove white spots from fingernails or whatever about that. Uh, an unusual biochemical ability that horsetails have is the ability uh, to concentrate gold from the soil, but never in amounts that are go going to make anybody rich. They don't look particularly palatable perhaps, uh, and apart from the silica, in fact they are poisonous in any quantity, but the fertile shoots of the field horsetail here and the giant horsetail can be cooked and eaten like asparagus. In fact I can I can vouch for the fact that the cones of the giant horsetail are sweet and juicy. And you can also make tea from the tops of the shoots of the field horsetail, this species here. Now I'm afraid that uh, you'll have to wait until next spring if you want to sample horsetail asparagus, but you can always have horsetail tea. which is rather like the taste of Japanese green tea.